Hi, and welcome into another edition of Music Fanimal here on Fanimal Radio. I'm Tony Lombardi, and this week my special guest is Andy Marchica, aka Cheek. Welcome in, Cheek. How are you? Yes, sir. Good to see you, Tony. Good to Thanks see for you. having me here. Appreciate it. No, our pleasure. So we wanted the audience to get to know you a little bit. So tell us a little bit about your, about your background and where you're from. We'll start with that. Well, born and raised in Maryland, uh, Burtonsville, Maryland, actually in Montgomery County. Burtonsville, I know yeah. that down there. Yeah, that's right. So local guy went to Paint Branch High School. Okay. So kind of where Montgomery County meets Howard County. Paint Branch had some big players come out of there, right? Yeah, Darnell Dockett would yeah. be one of them coming out of there, and. Uh, one of our, our Andy football, Marchica. Andy, well, of course, Andy Marchica, you know, <laughs> in Region 1 Olympic Development Program, UMBC goalkeeper Andy Marchica, that's right. Yeah, so grew up around there and then moved up to, moved up to Baltimore for college. I've been a Baltimore guy since. UMBC is where you went, obviously. That's right. I always have to represent. So Talk about your experiences there. You, and you played soccer there. I did. I for did. the great Pete Karinji. For the great, yep, yeah, Pete Karinji and uh, Anthony Adams, Sam DeBone. That, uh, that trio has been there for a really long time, and Coach Sam DeBone just uh, officially retired this year. Okay. So shout out to Coach uh, Sam DeBone on, I mean, over, you know, 30-year career uh, coaching in Montgomery County, actually, high school. Okay. Uh, uh, Walt Whitman came to UMBC. But uh, Coach Karinji recruited me out of, uh, out of high school. I mentioned I was a Region 1 Olympic Development Program goalkeeper, so Maryland State team, Region 1 program. I kind of got on their radar um, and, and checked out the school and one of the best recruiting trips ever. My brother was playing there at the time, so I, I was nice. kind of an easy sell. Yeah. So uh, I spent five years playing there, um, you know, freshman year all the way through grad school. Do you know Pete Eibner and Andy Mazzell? Oh yeah, of course. So Pete, Pete Eibner, I mean that guy, first of all, he's ripped. You know, I don't know how he does it. Um, as he's, he's aging very gracefully. That guy, <laughs> I like strive to be as ripped right. as him one day. <laughs> And he also, you know, really supports the program. I, I also try to stay connected with the program and the alumni right. and the coaches. I actually help to organize an annual golf tournament to support the men's soccer program. We just had our seventh annual tournament this past Friday. Um, and, you know, as always, it somehow comes together in the end. We get people to actually show up in golf, and we, we raise some good money for the program. Well, Pete's doing, and Pete and Andy are doing a show on Phantom Radio now. Oh, really? Called Off the Crossbar. you got to check out their debut yeah. was last week. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely I'll send check you a link. Out. Okay, cool. So where's home now? Home now is Catonsville. Okay. So I've kind of come back to the UNBC neighborhood. Right. After school, I moved downtown um, right by Camden Yards, which was really cool. My, my wife, now wife, who was my fiance at the time, was going to school at University of Maryland uh, Medical Center. And... Uh, you know, living right outside of the stadium was just great. You could just open up your windows and hear the game. So right. you, you could have, kind of have the game on TV, on mute, and then anytime you hear the crowd go wild, you're just like, oh, what, what, what happened? Go check it out. And when we got married and stayed downtown, Federal Hill area, for about 10 years, started having lots of kids, moved out to Catonsville, bigger yard, you know, and uh, just more space to grow. Out lots here. of kids. So yeah. you have four, right? Four kids. Names, yeah. ages? Yep. So the oldest are eight. I say that are eight because I have twins. Twin right. girls, uh, Cecilia and Layla, uh, they're in second grade. Not that you have any musical background. You named those two <laughs> Cecilia and Layla. That has nothing to do. Yeah, it's just a coincidence. No, I'm just kidding. I think that was a big inspiration for me. Um, when I had kids, too, like the musical inspiration was like really came out. Um, just having these, these people now in your life, these children to care for, and like the whole the love for music just was amplified when right. that happened, uh, and then Gavin, my son is five years old. He's in kindergarten, and the youngest is Helen. She is going to be two in just over a month. Two months, just over two months. So is she the typical two right now? She's getting there. Yeah, she's getting there. She's starting to learn more words, and she's getting into everything. Yeah. So like we have a thing of paper clips on our table, and. I've had to pick up paper clips like four times over the past two days, just all over the ground. So it's getting that sounds like a great family. Yeah, yeah. So what do you do during the daytime to keep yourself busy? So um, I manage a, an IT security team at Exelon. So that's my day job. Um, and I've been working at Exelon now over 12 years. So kind of right out of college, um, got, got involved there and been doing the IT gig. You know, I, I majored in information systems and got my master's at UMBC, all while playing soccer, which I'm really proud of. I was able to continue playing soccer through grad school. Uh, 
and then kept the IT thing going. Um, got that job through some connections that I have in the, the soccer world in Baltimore. You know how it is, the soccer right. community is very tight knit. It's huge. And you know, you meet somebody, you get an internship, and now I have a 12 year career, you know, just all stemming from that. So that's great, I love my job, I love the people that I work with, but really the most important thing for me is the balance between that and then family. So what I would love to do during the daytime is get home to my family, be with them, and then uh, you know, share my love for music and sports with them. Well, there's even a more another ingredient into that balance is music because absolutely, you know, music takes you away to nighttime hours, which takes absolutely. you away from the family. So talk about how you balance that. That is how uh, Andy Marchica gets out <laughs> when I have when I have these gigs, right? So, um, I mentioned the the soccer community in Baltimore, very tight knit, but it just expands into like the restaurant community, the bar scene, and all these friends that I've made over the years, a lot of them now have restaurants, bars in the Baltimore area. So, um, you know, maybe in 2010 is when I hooked up with my buddy, John Menadakis over at Jimmy's Famous mm -hmm. Seafood. I said, hey man, why don't you come out and play sometime? So that was my first gig uh, over nine years ago now that I've been playing out at bars. Started at Jimmy's, played there every two weeks. That was my night out. And now with kids, you know, it's not as frequent. Right. Try to get out once or twice a month, but play at Libs Grill in Perry Hall, Libs Grill in Maple Lawn, used to do Shoddy's Point downtown all the time. That was the easiest because I lived in South Baltimore. Right. I could stumble home. He's got a couple, couple places in Ocean City now, too. Yeah, he Shoddy does. Yeah. yeah, he does. Just opened one, up one on the uh, boardwalk and got another one up in the, the 30s yes. area. Yes. Yeah, so they're all great spots. So I really like playing there. Um, but uh, house parties also is a lot of fun to do when you're just hanging out with friends and they're like, all right, Cheeks, go up there and you know, play some tunes and I'll bring my equipment and set up and have a good time. But I do enjoy doing the, uh, the bar restaurant scene because uh, it's just, it's a passion, right? And that is, you know, when you get people that you've never met before, that you don't know that they start hearing you play and they just hang out, they stay and you can tell that they're into it, they start interacting with you. I'm just pouring my heart into it it's a good workout for one, and it's just a way to release all that good, you know, productive energy. So I love it. So how did you get into it? Were you in college? Were you, was it earlier in life? Well, you know, I would say I first picked up a guitar right, when I was around 12. Okay. Um, my mom, uh, she always wanted to play the guitar, but then like life and kids happen. My mom, I'm one of five. I'm the middle child of five. So she never had time much to play, but she's had a guitar. So I kind of picked it up. I started messing around with it, um, and then, you know, had some friends that were learning how to play the guitar at the same time. So, from there, it's been over 20 years now that I've been playing. Uh, never really took formal lessons, but um, just had enough friends that that could play. And then when I got to college, and the internet was getting big, YouTube was getting big, I could just look up songs and learn how to play stuff. My college roommate, my freshman year, Danny Mangello. I hadn't met him before college. We played against each other, but not really knowing it. We get in there and we're like immediately best friends. He's like, oh man, you play the guitar? This is amazing. So we would just look up songs on the internet. So he played as well? He didn't play. Oh, no. He was just a huge fan of music okay. and he was just all about it. He was like huge encouragement in terms of, you know, I went to college, I kind of knew how to play the guitar. I could sing a little bit. I, I got pretty good in high school, not great. Uh, but when I got to college, it was just, let's get the guitar out, let's learn some new songs. And he had this little microphone on his old, you know, desktop computer with the big old, you know, CRT monitor, the big, huge, you know, uh, thing on the desk. And we would just sit there in the dorm room and record songs. And we would practice and play all the time. And he would occasionally be my backup singer, but for the most part, he would just be like the sound guy. Okay. He'd be like, all right, ready, here we go. And he'd click the mouse and we'd start recording. So that's when I really, I'd say, um, blossomed into like I really want to start playing music and performing and, and you know be in the life of the party kind of thing you know Cecilia Layla obviously influences from classic rock songs yep talk yep. about your musical influence I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that it's along those lines yeah absolutely so you know Eric Clapton Simon and Garfunkel were big influences because they just had that good you know, Simon and Garfunkel had that good folk sound and Harmonies. That's kind of from my, and the harmonies, oh yeah. So that's, I'd say, influence from my mother. 
She also loved the Beatles, so I had that influence. I know somebody else sure. loves the Beatles. Yeah, too. right. <laughs> yeah, this guy right here. <laughs> yeah, so that that was a big influence on me, and I just love those classic rock songs. Interestingly enough, I don't play that much classic rock. That's the music I like to listen to, but then um, the music that I play is what I grew up with in the 90s. Okay. So when I was just learning how to play the guitar, my biggest influences were Nirvana, Green Day, uh, Bush. I'm talking like good grunge. They were good 90s bands. bands. And oh yeah, so I was learning, like, the first song I learned how to play on the guitar is probably Come As You Are by Nirvana. Just like I always and, appreciated uh, the Unplugged. Yeah. That was my favorite album of theirs, loved Unplugged. It. Loved it, yeah. I loved un the Unplugged album. You know, Eric Clapton had a great Unplugged yes. album. So those are my big influences, I'd say, in high school. And then getting into college, kind of switched over to um, late high school into college, Sublime, huge influence, and, and Bob Marley. Took a trip to Jamaica, learned a lot about like kind of the older reggae music. Really influenced me big time then, and you know had a guitar out there in Jamaica just playing on the beach. And then uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, man, I, I just love those, those guys. Um, Red Hot Chili Peppers is a band I've never gotten to see live, but one of these days, it's on the bucket <laughs> I'm gonna make it happen. Yeah, yeah. So it's talking about a little bit about the music you like to play the most. Like, what's the, your favorite song that you like to play? So I mentioned I got really big into Sublime. Right, right. right? I'm still really big into Sublime. I'd say Santeria is my favorite song to play because I could just play it over and over, and it's one of those songs where I'll play it kind of early on in the show, and I'll bring it back again towards the end just because I love playing it so much. And you know, maybe and you probably show don't up. have the same yeah. audience the whole time anyway, <laughs> exactly, right? Right. Yeah. So that, that's my absolute favorite song to play. But there's a few others. You know, I, I love playing uh, "Under the Bridge" by uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. It's just such a cool guitar riff. Yeah. Ever been a song where you were like looking at the crowd and you're looking out there saying, "I've got no one right now." Oh man. Yeah, and those are the, like the for me songs. Like, <laughs> like. I so at least you're enjoying obscure. it, right? Yeah, right. Like, I know nobody's ever heard this song, but I'm going to play it anyways. Like, there, there's this song that I like. It's actually from a movie called Homegrown, and, like, Billy Bob Thornton's in it. And it, it, I think Bon Jovi is in it at one point. Okay. It's like some random drug dealer. But it's about these guys, you know, they, they grow and sell. Homegrown. Marijuana. Yeah, it's homegrown. But there's this a scene, just a random scene. We're at this uh, house party, and they're outside, this big tent. And there's a band in the background playing this, this cool jam. It's called Great Escape. I can't remember the name of the, the band right now, but it had just a, such a cool melody. So I, I looked it up, I learned it, and every once in a while I'll bring that song out. And I, I play it, people probably assume that I wrote it. And sometimes they get into it, sometimes they don't, but that's just one of those songs that I like to play, and it doesn't really matter. If people Has anyone come up to you and not. says, I recognize that song? Not once. Not once. <laughs> not once. <laughs> I'll be that guy next yeah, time. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we did earlier during the season here on Music Fanimal is talk about the perfect album. And actually, it was Drew Forrester's idea, a colleague of mine that does the armchair quarterback here on Fanimal Radio. And he's, his idea of perfect album was you would not want to skip a single song. Mm -hmm. It's like in your mind, flawless. Is there an album, such an yeah. album for you? That's a, that's a really hard question. Uh, so I'd, I'd say there, there are probably two of them and they're both by Sublime, big okay. surprise. So when I was in high school and I was just starting to get into guitar, just starting to get into um, you know, that kind of Sublime, ska, punk, reggae sound, um, and Bradley Knoll had just passed away, lead singer mm -hmm. of Sublime, so there wasn't any really like new Who's the guy that took music. over for him? Well, now they have a guy called Rome. So Sublime, right, right, right. Sublime right. with Rome is the front man. But Bradley Knoll, you know, the original just voice and guitar of Sublime, uh, kind of disappointing, you know, depressing that they're not going to come out with new music, but then they came out with this acoustic album called Bradley Knoll and Friends. And I would listen to that album beginning to end, like nonstop, and I committed myself, I'm going to learn all these songs, I'm going to sing just like Bradley, and this is going to be awesome. And every single one of those songs, they're, they're live, they're acoustic. There's a couple, maybe one or two studio recordings, like Bad Fish, for instance, mm -hmm. that are on there, but it's just all raw and in the moment type music that, you know, he's making mistakes, which that happens when you're doing live stuff, but he just, he, he's making it fun. And that attitude towards music that this is going to be fun, getting the crowd involved, um, it just, I would listen to that thing all day long. 
and not skip one of those songs. The other one would be 40 Ounces to Freedom, which is one of their studio albums that I could just listen to beginning to end straight through. And it's got such a good range of you know, the ska punk sound, the reggae sound, uh, some of the rock stuff, like more harder rock and even a classic rock sound. They, they cover Scarlet Begonias on that album. What's the uh, meaning behind that, the title? 40 Ounces to Freedom? Well, I think uh, the answer's always waiting at the liquor store. So I think that, that's pretty <laughs> okay. much the meaning behind that album. You know, four, just 40 ounces and, you know, that's your, that's your release, that's his escape. Um, so I think it's kind of a sad meeting at the same time, given what took his life right. was addiction, um, which is why I, you know, I've lost friends to addiction as well. So some of the music that he played has an even deeper meaning when you're talking about you know, drug addiction or alcohol addiction you know, and that whole thing where 40 ounces of freedom in that song, you know, the answer's always waiting at the liquor store, 40 ounces of freedom. So I take that walk, you know, and like that's where he goes. But bad it's almost like code for going to the liquor store. Right? It is, it is, yeah. And it, it made me think more about bad fish too. Um, and there's kind of like this hidden meaning behind bad fish where that's kind of somebody that introduces you to drugs and gets you in, you know, and, and uh, there's a lot of lines in that and that song where I would listen to it, I would play it, and I never really thought about it, that uh, just all the, the subtle t hints at addiction, you know, like, won't somebody get me off of this reef, like, help me out, get me out of this situation that I'm in, you know, I, I swim, but I wish I never learned, like, that has to do with, right. you know, drinking and getting yourself into it, but I've listened to a lot of the, that stuff uh, recently with some, you know, personal losses I've had in my life, and I just channel that energy straight back into the music, and it brings makes it that much more emotional for me. Um, so connected to the yeah, songs, and yeah, it, it the gets performance you is better, right? You know, sometimes you hear the lyrics to songs, you don't really think much about them, but you know, there's some deep stuff there. All right, a little bit of a lighter note. Yeah, I want you, I want you to complete <laughs> complete these sentences. I wish I could play guitar like. Oh man, so I'm gonna I'm gonna switch this up a little bit. So not just guitar, but bass guitar. Okay. I wish I could play the guitar like Flea plays the bass. Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm -hmm. If you've ever seen that guy perform, I mean, that guy, you know, slap bass, popping the strings, just intense. I wish I could play the guitar like Flea plays the bass. Okay, Because that, that guy just completely kills it. I wish I could sing like. I wish I could sing like Freddie Mercury. I thought you would say that. Yeah, that guy, I mean, come on. I, I still haven't seen Bohemian Rhapsody, have you? Yes, very good. <sighs> I wish I'd seen that in the theater, because it's like, just like the sound. Same, the I, saw, I saw it at home, so I wish I'd gone to the theater. Oh my goodness, man, but that, the range of that guy, sometimes people will ask me to play a certain song, maybe even like a Queen song. I'm like, do you know some of the notes that he hits in that song? <laughs> you know, he was like an opera singer, you know, yeah. I can't do that but yeah, I wish I could. Pretty, he was pretty crazy. A local talent that really needs to be discovered would be? So, Ray Roten. I don't know if you know Ray, if you've I seen him play. Uh, I don't get out and see that many other musicians. I said, you know, my right. night's out is when I'm playing. Right. Right. Every once in a while, I get to see other musicians, or sometimes they'll be at my shows, and I'll recognize them. And he'll, you know, one time Ray was at one of my gigs, and I asked him to come up and play a song. And he just comes up there cold and rocks it. I was doing dishes the other day. <laughs> Sometimes I like to you know, listen to music or watch something on, on my phone or something while I'm doing dishes. I get on the Facebook and I see he's, somebody's recording him on Facebook Live. And that was like the best time I've ever had doing dishes. I just put <laughs> that thing right up there on the, on the shelf, did dishes and watched him and listened to him play. How do you spell Ray's last name? W-R-O-T-E-N. Okay. Yeah, Ray Roden. I mean, that guy, he's got a lot of original songs. Play some covers. He's really good. Yeah. Okay. Most unusual song request of you ever was. Well, sometimes people request songs that are like completely not in my wheelhouse, right? Like, hey, can you do some like death metal or you know, like, <laughs> like play some Slipknot, dude? People sometimes mistake you for a human jukebox. Right. <laughs> yeah. But like those, I can't even remember what they're requesting because I don't know those songs. I think the most unusual song like recently was, hey, do you know any Justin Bieber? And like, well, you've been listening to me play. I'm kind of like in the 90s doing some alternative rock, but Bieber, like some pop. And this is one of my friends, and she was, she's a believer. 
I guess. I'm so <laughs> she's like, do you know how to play Sorry? I'm like, well, let's, let's give it a shot. And I kind of like messed around with the chords a little bit. And then uh, I went home and looked up a video of him doing it acoustic. And I'm like, man, Justin Bieber's got some really good talent. The guy can play guitar, he can sing. And uh, I tried it out next time I saw her. And I really like playing that song. No, I never, staple. yeah, like, you know, is it too late now to say sorry? It's a, it's a good jam, but, <laughs> but when, when you say into the mic, I'm about to play some Justin Bieber, you're like, really? But hey, I think, I think it turned out really nice. So I'm guessing the answer to the next question is going to be a sublime song, but maybe I'm wrong. The song I never tire of is... Oh, man. So of course I would say it's a sublime song, but I, I should get creative and think about something different. So there is a song by Dispatch. Like dis if you know Dispatch, they did a song called The General. Um, but there's a song, it's more, one of their more obscure songs called Elias that I really like playing. And it actually starts out with like just a beat on the guitar, and then you kind of chant, Na Jesu Achuene Kwa, Ta Esu Faranae, which is like an African language. I'm not okay. even sure what it is. But you kind of get into that beat going, and then you start hitting the guitar, keep the beat going on the guitar. And it's just got a really, um, the lyrics are great. It's all about uh, this, this person that the band met when they traveled to Africa, and talking about him and his family and all the stuff that he has to do. And then the, the, the chorus is like, if you died, would I get word that you're gone? You know, or like just thinking about that person halfway around the world. Right. And it's just got a really cool beat to it. I like playing it. Sometimes I end my shows with that because it's really, it's upbeat at the same time as like really thoughtful, right. thought provoking. I never get tired of that. And I'll give you one more just because I, I didn't mention them as being an influence, but OAR, a local band out of Maryland. Um, OAR stands for of a revolution. And they have a song called Crazy Game of Poker that I'll never get tired of that song either. It's like eight minutes long. You know, you could stretch it out to a good 10, 12 minutes if you want, just based on how you do the choruses. Are they like from Rockville or somewhere? Yeah, down Rockville, there? Maryland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're Montgomery County boys, just like yeah, me. Just like you. Yeah. They go to school with you? No, no, they went to Wooten. So oh. they were, I guess they're, they're competition. Yeah. They're, they're a few years older than I was. So um, I know I have some, some of my friends have older siblings that knew them. And then they went off to, uh, I guess, Ohio State? I think they went to Ohio State, and they were there for a while, and New York, California, all around. But yeah, I think they're always, they have a lot of songs about coming back to Maryland. And they, anytime they play at Merriweather, I try to get there to, to watch. I'm gonna go out, I think it's September, see them there. Okay. They have a, a cool song that called, that's called I Feel Home. That, that, that one is always good too, because it's all about kind of coming back and being with your, your original crew. Nice. 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 So where can people see you play? Or how can they find out your schedule? That's probably a better question. So I, I usually post where I'm going to be on Facebook. So you can look me up. There's it's Cheeks. Andy Marchica is my fan page that I have on Facebook. Or you just look me up, Andy Marchica, on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, at uh, Cheeks Acoustic. So you can find me on there, and I can post, uh, post where I'm going to play. But for the most part, you can find me at Libs Grill in Perry Hall almost every month. The second Friday. That's I how I got to, to know the guy. Going. I try to keep the second Fridays alive. <laughs> with Wojo. With Wojo, that's my boy. Yeah. And then I, I do the Libs Grill in Maple Lawn every few months. A little closer to home, I guess. Yeah, right? that's not bad. And then really close to home is the Caton Tavern, which is right at the end of my street. I started playing there just this past year. Um, so I'd like to play there more often as well. So th those are the, the, the main spots. Finally got back to Jimmy's Seafood after like almost two years not playing there. I just played there last week and it was, it was nice. awesome. It was, talk about I Feel Home. That's where I really got my start. Right. Playing music out in front of people. That was just really cool getting back there after almost 10 years uh, of starting there. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. All right. You going to play a song for us? Yeah, man. Let's do it. Cheek. Good having Let's you here. Let's do it. So take it away. Cheek, a.k.a. Andy Marchica. So Tony, one thing that we didn't do was thank my wife, Julie, when we were doing the interview. Julie, my wife of soon to be 12 years, thank you so much for being my inspiration and allowing me to, to pursue what I love in music. Don't practice Santeria, I 
ain't got no crystal ball Well, I had a million dollars, but I I'd spend it all if I could find that Hina And that Sancho that she's found Well, I pop her cap in Sancho And I slap her daddy down But I really want to know My baby, yeah well, I really want to say I can define this love that I need. Oh, my soul will have to wait till I get back and find that Hannah of my own. Daddy's gonna love one it all. And I feel the break, feel the break, feel the break, and I've got to live. Oh, yeah, uh-huh, and I swear that I, I really want to know, my baby, yeah, what I really want to say is I've got mine, I'll make it, yes, I'm coming up, my soul I do. Daddy's got a new 45 And I won't think twice to stick that bell straight down Sancho's throat Believe me when I say that I've got something for his punk ass well, I really want to know, my baby, yeah What I really want to say is there's just one Way back and I'll make 